so I'm Stravko, CEO of um, Stravko, which is developing Homeport. Um, and I'm going to explain to you what Homeport is. Uh, but before that, we have to give a quick rundown of what satellite data is, because Homeport is a satellite data platform. So everybody knows what a satellite is, um, but most people don't really know what a satellite does. Uh, satellites are basically data vehicles. So they're basically machines which generate, store, and then uh, transmit data. Which brings us to the interesting question, um, how do we actually get that data from up there, from, from space? Um, the answer to this question is pretty simple. We build something called ground stations, which are essentially antennas pointed upwards towards the sky, and we wait for the satellite to pass above so that we can receive the data. So if you are a company which operates satellites, and many of those companies now exist, many more will appear in the coming years, uh, one of the ways to basically solve this um, is to build your own ground stations across the globe uh, so that you can receive the data as often as possible. However, this means that you're going to spend a lot on building this equipment, uh, on personnel, and also on licensing, which in itself is a great cost. So. That means that we have a very reasonable solution to this, and that is to outsource this activity to somebody else. This is what you call ground station as a service. Ground station as a service companies basically have their own networks of ground stations, and uh, that means that they can offer this uh, ground station network to any interesting satellite operator. But with any such service uh, with intermediary qualities, basically uh, the satellite operator is tied to this intermediary's conditions uh, and to their limitations, which also is valid for the ground station operators, which is why we've taken a decentralized approach and developed Homeport, which is a platform which allows ground, station, uh, ground stations across the globe to join and satellite operators to also join and interact freely. Uh, every party sets their own rate on how the data is going to be received. And on top of this, there is a data analytics element, which is going to be activated which will allow additional uh, value to be added to this data which is received and then through the analytics element uh, processed. Uh, it's a fairly simple architecture of what we've um, started building. Uh, satellite operators and operators of uh, ground stations across the globe uh, basically have an access to a single marketplace in which they can conclude a downlink agreement which says which satellite is going to pass where, at which point, uh, what are the rates to basically get this data down, to store it, and to transfer it? Um, this downlink agreement is achieved by using a smart contract on top of the Eternity blockchain. Uh, and the smart contract in itself allows to directly issue these tasks uh, and negotiate the payments in a contract format, basically. Uh, and the Eternity blockchain itself also allows for uh, two other elements to be introduced, namely data verification of um, whatever has been received by the ground station uh, to ensure that the smart contract is uh, automatically executed and state channels for increased privacy for uh, government users, which tend to be a good chunk of those who use satellite data. We've already built um, an alpha version of this application, which allows for all the basic elements of this architecture to be tested, a dashboard for user interactions and contracting, uh, scheduling a satellite passes and real-time notifications and registration of hardware. We have a five-person team. Our core team includes uh, me uh, and also uh, Lazar, our CTO. Uh, we're both uh, members of the SatPoint Initiative, a Bulgarian um, non-governmental organization focused on space technology R&D. Um, and basically, this is a spin-off project uh, because this organization uh, has 14 members, most of them are space engineers with experience in some of the largest uh, space corporations and agencies. Uh, we've now launched our seed phase. Um, we have some venture funding already acquired. As already mentioned, we've, uh, we have an alpha uh, prototype. Uh, which we've called Hydrogen. It's already deployed with uh, 10 stations signed up, with which we will begin uh, tests of the platform shortly. We imagine the future to be uh, quite broad in the sense that through Homeport, we can have a global space data network, which includes IoT constellations, communications relays, satellites, and even deep space probes. And any ground station can join this network from single ground stations to very large teleports and deep space relays. Um, and this includes, uh, this means that we can process all kinds of data, uh, compile big data sets, 
uh, and service industry, you, you. various you. types of services and agriculture. Five minutes, if you can hear me now, uh, let's yeah. dive into the Q&A with the jury members because I'm sure there yeah. are plenty of questions for you. Uh, let me yeah. see you in, uh, in the jury members who wants to go first. Let's make sure that everyone gets uh, its uh, fair share. We'll begin with Belizar. Belizar, please ask your question and then move on. Hello, uh, my question is what is your validation with users up to this point and who is your investor so far? Thank you, let's move, let's see out. Uh, we have validation from ground station operators uh, and also from a satellite operator uh, and some space agencies. We validated this with a major satellite operator um, and we also have um, an investor um, uh, after the Eternity Starfleet um, uh, a Starfleet Accelerator program. Thank you. Let's now move on to the next one. Let's squeeze as many, uh, as much value as possible. We had Raya, and please uh, raise your raise your hand to uh, to name you after that. Raya, please. Thanks for the presentation, Zdravko. Very interesting space. Uh, curious why you decided to use blockchain, and uh, why can you not go without that? That's a very good question. Uh, basically, we resort to blockchain because of the um, essentially the cornerstone of the negotiation process uh, on our platform is the smart contract, which allows for um, this execution of contracts to be much, much faster. Uh, and this is particularly valuable um, in some stages of launching a satellite mission, particularly in the early stages when uh, it's very necessary to quickly find the ground station and not go through all kinds of... Um, uh, hurdles that would um, uh, basically slow down this process, and that includes basically the old-fashioned way of, of contracting. Thank you. Uh, who was it next? Uh, please uh, ra raise a hand so I know uh, who's next. Uh, I think it was Will, right? You had a question, Will? No. No, no. Okay. Let's move on to the to the next one. Raya still has something to add. I can keep asking questions if there are no more from the other judges. <laughs> Uh, until we queue up, we have Catalina as well. Yeah. Uh, we can move on to, to Catalina if you want. Um, just a short question. Can you detail your revenue stream just to make it sure? We understand. Um, uh, yes. Uh, in terms of um, basically revenue, what we expect uh, the most initially is from, um, from the ground stations um, uh, itself, but it's not from the ground station directly. Essentially, the business model that we have is, uh, is quite simple. Once the satellite and the ground station operator conclude an agreement, uh, it is of a specific uh, specific value depending on the rates. Um, and on the basis of that, we have a, like a very small uh, percentage of the contract as a commission of each smart contract. Thank you. Now we can go back to Raya, or if there's uh, other questions coming from, from the jury members, please raise a hand. Raya, you go next. Uh Sorry if this is an obvious question, but I know very little about the space. How many um, uh, how many suppliers do you need on the platform on both sides, so the um, satellite operators and the ground station operators, to make this a useful tool? Uh, well, essentially, for commercial ground station operators, um, we the minimum that we're looking for is uh, fifteen ground stations spread globally. Um, for satellite operators, um, that's, an, that's an interesting point because it can be either several small satellite operators, that is, they operate a small number of satellites, or they can be a larger constellation of dozens of satellites, which essentially all need servicing. So it can be just a, a, maybe two or three constellations, or it can be a larger number of, um, uh, of operators of a smaller number of satellites. Thank you. Thank you once again. Uh, if that was uh, that was all for the moment, we can also carry on. But we have one more question from Malin. Malin, please. Um, what is the technological barrier actually for this? Because it's a marketplace, in my understanding. So, what would prevent another player to join the same space? Uh, there are already competitors who are active. Uh, however, the unique point of essentially what we do is that um, our business model is not based that much on um, creating bottlenecks uh, or being essentially like a barrier between satellites uh, and ground station operators. On the contrary, we, uh, we're more focused on the fact that uh, both the number of ground stations and the number of satellites is going to increase many times in the coming years. For example, right now we have 300 imaging satellites in orbit, and that is expected to triple in the next five or six years. 
uh, and we plan to leverage the, the whole scaling. And for us, it's beneficial to do scaling as opposed to basically our competitors who uh, rather seek to extract the uh, more rigid um, situation which exists right now.